Eric Mwad with Mwad.com with this weekend's market analysis video for the weekend of October 14th and October 15th, 2017. Let's take a look at the markets here. We have about four hours to go before the close. Let's go to the charts. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to have some stock picks. We're going to take a look at some breakout ideas. And also, just in case the market is due for a pullback, we're going to be taking a look at some bearish ideas and i'll also take a look at some of those bitcoin stocks that were moving this week so that's for subscribers but for now let's go to the free version of this weekend's market analysis video begin with the nasdaq and as i have been stating all week the key here for momentum is whether the nasdaq can continue holding above 69.1 right now it is above that so we have to conclude that on the weekly chart the markets continue to be sideways at worst bullish at best also as we begin the new week next week let's watch this here if the nasdaq shows uniform activity rejection at the 69.1 threshold then that is gonna be a visual sign of a market that wants to pull back again the way to summarize this is as long as the nasdaq is holding above 69.1 the momentum remains to the upside if we take a look at the daily we come to the same conclusion we've been hovering around the 69.1 level this this entire week on the daily for the nasdaq which explains this slow but upward grind pretty much we've been making fresh intraday highs all week and that should be remain that should remain true as long as the nasdaq is holding above 69.1 on its daily chart we take a look at the hourly and we start seeing potential cracks short term i actually do lean to this idea where we are making a higher high intraday but seems to me that the market continues to confirm this negative divergence look that being the case that tells me that more than likely we are setting up for a pullback as far as markets are concerned and we don't know what type of a pullback it could be a shallow pullback or it could be the beginning of a major pullback we shall see if you take a look at the 30 minute chart for the nasdaq pretty much the same conclusion and you can see that the nasdaq's been inching to all-time intraday highs even closing highs on a daily basis but take a look at the technicals we see that we have a well-defined negative divergence line in other words market is showing improvement in prices but the technicals are not following through or the rsi is not following through or the strength is not following through from a technical perspective which means we should start looking for this pullback that is around the corner in my opinion now of course we have to be very careful to conclude for the market what it it is going to do because if the market was to clear this line if we see the market break above that line that's just going to ignite another momentum to the upside so just let's be aware the market can do whatever it wants but as long as we see this negative divergence as the market's been making an improvement here chances are we are looking at a market that is due for a pullback if we take a look at the dow the dow gives us a good example of why we should watch the 69.1 threshold and it is very simple here we've been talking about this for many weeks take a look at this period here where the dow was above 69.1 until here we had a nice bullish phase pullbacks were there but they were shallow and again we go through another bullish phase here with the rsi above 69.1 the market continues attacking all-time highs until we get a move back below the 69.1 threshold and we are still as of right now above the 69.1 threshold which means in this period where we are trading above 69.1 what the Dow is telling us is the markets are still sideways at worst, bullish at best. And that remains to be true. The Dow daily confirms that look, we continue holding above 69.1. In fact, if you are wondering why the market continues to plug to the upside, it is pretty much because the daily RSI for the Dow continues to be above 69.1. And again, good example here, above 69.1, you stay above at high levels the market continues trending high in this period it's a simple it's a simple technical 
understanding of how markets respond again above 69.1 we continue trending higher until we move back below this level and again here you see another period where the market continued moving to fresh all-time daily highs until it came off the 69.1 threshold simple simple way of understanding how markets respond and the magic number here is 69.1 so the conclusion is inescapable we remain in a very strong uptrend until the market comes off the 69.1 threshold if you are looking for cracks you'll see this on the hourly chart for the dow new highs rsi continues to struggle a little bit but this is more evident on the 30 minute chart which is right now showing the same look as the nasdaq hourly we got this negative divergence and don't forget the most recent intraday high here has come with the rsi failing to hold above 61.8 let me show let me zoom in here let's go take a look from a closer view from a one month view so we can see this clearly so we got the same chart dow 30 minute and you see intraday highs improvement there but take a look at the technical picture there seems to be an emerging theme of the strength not following through and what that tells us is ultimately we are poised for a pullback of some sorts it could be for a shallow pullback it could be the beginning of a major high it all depends on what happens after the pullback if the pullback finds immediate support then the market is fine but if the pullback continues on to break major support levels and that this becomes a major high of course we don't know right now and what i was saying here is we have an intraday push here to all-time highs but the rsi right there did not move above 61.8 based on my research that tends to be the worst type of negative divergence suggesting we can expect the market to be pulling back now we can spend the same amount of time looking at the s p 500 which is the same conclusion rsi above 69.1 s p 500 daily above 69.1 and then now we start seeing that the hourly is where we start seeing cracks improvement potential for negative divergence we see the same 30 minute look which is pretty much the same as the nasdaq and the dow and here you can see improvement declining in strength in fact let me zoom in here again so we can see this a little bit clearer clearer or clearly and here we see improvement to all-time highs intraday highs but take a look at the technicals more importantly again we made this intraday high but the rsi failed to move above 61.8 suggesting to me more than likely this is setting up for a pullback even as markets continue trading at pretty much near to all-time highs and we can also see that on the five minute for the s p 500 there's a line connecting the tops of the rsi right now which continues to suggest there's a pullback in store because markets have been making an improvement to all-time intraday highs but the rsi has not followed through but now let's take a look at this from a long-term perspective which is the monthly and the monthly is scary bullish and we take a look at this let's take a look at a five-year monthly and we've been talking about this for a long long time here is a great great example between 2013 and 2015 the s p 500 stayed above 69.1 and throughout this period we got shallow pullbacks but the market ultimately was very strong on hindsight we can see we had to be best positioned by being long and since we began 2017 same story market jumped above 69.1 and you can see for yourself or we we know that the market's been absolutely strong so what's the conclusion as long as the s p 500 the down the nasdaq continues holding above 69.1 expect markets to be sideways at worst bullish at best and there's pretty much no other way of looking at it now that concludes the free portion of this video for those who are not paid subscribers to mother.com wish you a great weekend otherwise we'll see you in the next edition of the 
weekend analysis video otherwise for subscribers let's continue on take a look at some sectors take a look at commodities we'll take a look at bullish stock picks bearish stock picks take a look at some of those bitcoin ideas and a sh small look at world markets all right let's take a look at the dow transports on the dow transports there is we can take a look at this from two points of view either we are coming back to test a break here of that high and we are still within potential for either breakout or resistance as you can see if we show resistance here like we did in that J July period if we show resistance in the current market then that suggests that there's a pullback in store at the same time because the line is well defined if we continue just inching above that line the Dow transport might have a chance of moving higher it looks to me like we can actually if I was forced to take one one point of view I would take this one here and I'll show you why it's because of the hourly charts looks like if this is confirmed as resistance I would expect the Dow transports to come off their highs take a look at the daily and the daily here we can see I would say daily is fine because the daily is strong as long as the daily is above 69.1 it is strong yes I can see a, a negative divergence it's very small negative divergence but takeaway here is as long as the Dow transports are above 69.1 the market should be okay and favor the Dow transports the problem here is on the hourly as we've seen in other markets improvement to new highs or recent highs but take a look at the technicals that negative divergence does set the stage for some type of a pullback now same thing is also with the XLF the financial space ETF by the way I really have to stress the idea here that on the monthly as of right now the XLF meets meets all the minimum requirements RSI is above 69.1 on the monthly and one of the MACDs at the very least is trading at three-year highs so really it does meet the minimum requirements for a strong push by the financials so let's respect that now if we take a drill in and take a look at the weekly we come to the same conclusion as that of the transports which is that we are pretty much coming to test this recent break of that high and so we draw a line from there which happens to be at about 69.1 and what we find is that this was resistance which gave us that high even here which gave us that high and now we've already seen resistance here so the hourly excuse me the weekly chart might be suggesting this is where we stall and also this is uniform activity rejection at the 69.1 threshold so the weekly chart is a little bit pointing to a pullback and maybe this is where it starts coming off the highs but the monthly chart let's be let's be careful here because the monthly chart is still strong as long as the monthly chart is above 69.1 the financials should be okay if not bullish let's take a look at some commodities begin with the SLX and here we can see that what I believe is happening here is on the weekly now I should show you the monthly first because the monthly as we saw with the um, financials the monthlies right now depending on a breakout if we get a breakout or not the monthlies are actually within this breakout potential you can see that it is above the prior monthly closing high we can see that your RSI is inching closer to three year highs and we can see that one of the MACDs is at three-year highs so here this is one market that could actually be a momentum market as long as it can maintain the RSI's above 16 above three-year high sorry and the MACDs continue trading above three-year highs so looks good actually could be suggesting that this is where it might move higher now if you take a look at the long-term view we know that this has been a, a trouble spot for the xlf xlx which is the steel sector etf slx 
and so we are still within resistance here but we know that if it clears this level that might ignite a very strong move in the space now compare that with the weekly chart which again we see another chart which is lining up on the weekly with potential for resistance we can see that this was resistance here of that high we draw a line from there and you can see that we still we are still within potential for resistance here and here if it is confirmed as we begin the new week or in the coming weeks so I, I still that still maintain that could be a level of resistance if we take a look at let's take a look here at the at the hourly and the hourly charts are pretty much all showing potential for resistance and here we can see that if we draw a line that connects the previous break it should be around the 69.1 level here of that intraday high you can see pretty much we are coming back to test that level there and we've hit that level recently here for this shallow pullback and now here we are and we are back below 69.1 so this could be a logical area for resistance and I'll show you other hourly charts in the commodity space that look the same take a look at COPX and I had thought this was stalling if you remember this move here the monthly charts look like they were stalling and they were bearish at the time but take a look at the view now on the copper space by way of the COPX ETF and what we see here is again like we saw with the steel sector potential for a breakout to three year highs one of the MACDs is at three year highs RSI is close to it so you can see here the more the monthly chart can clear this recent monthly closing high this actually turns from being a bearish situation to a bullish potential situation if it can break out and also on the long term monthly chart we can see that it is still within the resistance around the 61.8 level take a look at the RSI failure to hold above the 61.8 threshold might suggest this is where it stalls so we are pretty much within a make or break situation now compare that with the hour with the weekly chart and with the weekly and you can see the weekly as we've seen with other markets the weekly charts are probably where we are seeing potential for resistance levels now we've stalled here resistance with uniform activity uniform activity here also rejection at 69.1 which gave us this short term high and now we are back to test the same line so either we can break out or we can show resistance but if you take a look at the hourly the hourly is definitely leaning to negative divergence improvement rejection at 69.1 and also negative divergence lower highs on the RSI suggesting to expect a pullback if we take a look at gold by way of the GLD we go to the monthly chart and we can see that the monthly chart is not too far away from breaking out if gold can clear this 126 plus area a movement above that monthly high or monthly closing high from recent months and also if it coincides with the breakout of your RSI to three-year highs one of the MACDs is very close to three-year highs so I would say that's good if the RSI can move to three year highs gold can be in play but again here to summarize this view let's take a look at the other charts here and the one that was giving me an idea of what the market is doing here was the hourly and the hourly for gold as we see with other other charts that we've seen in this analysis for this weekend you can see that it is coming back within a level of resistance right there so hour to hour we've hit this level twice now and also we can see improvement short term RSI did not improve that negative divergence again in my opinion sets the stage for some type of a pullback in gold we take a look at USO and we go to the weekly chart for for crude oil or USO the ETF that tracks crude oil and you can see that pretty much what's been happening here is we have been coming back to test the break this break here short-term break 
which brings it off those highs and we've hit this line or this resistance level here even here off that high here again off this high and now we've been struggling to hold above that line so either we continue showing resistance on this line and stall or finally we clear that line and break out now if you take a look at the hourly chart to be consistent with other charts we've seen you can see that pretty much the same conclusion is hour to hour seems to be some type of across the board indication of charts stalling there's risk there's a break there draw a line from there which is our uniformity resistance line break of the high resistance resistance coming back to test that level that seems to me is where we can expect there to be some type of a resistance the same thing can also be said with silver SLV and here we ha we can go to the weekly chart also and the weekly chart pretty much coming back to test this break of that high and then we see a, this is where it's been stalling this week weekly RSI resistance level so resistance here and all this we saw when it was happening so these pullbacks have been very well telegraphed by the steel sector or by the silver sector of the market or the silver index and here we have been unable to move above that line compare this with the daily and you can see that the daily is also coming back to test this break line here which is this break and so we draw our uniformity resistance line and if you are new to this concept which I call uniformity there should be a link I'm gonna have a link in the description of the video that describes this in detail but resistance here should confirm that there's a pullback in store take a look at the hourly and the hourly here again we see RSI topside resistance and recently we've seen an improvement short term hour to hour but this has come with declining technicals so resistance line declining technicals suggesting that we should be expecting commodities also to be set for type of a pullback unless unless these commodities go on to break out above the resistance lines that I'm showing here on the hourly now if we take a look at UUP and take a look at the monthly chart keep in mind on the monthly chart we've been taking a look at this potential for support here if that support on the monthly continues holding we can expect that ultimately the dollar should bounce to the upside and at the same time failure to hold the, the, the support line the blue line if it breaks below the blue line that's a big deal because this blue line was the entry of the lows here and so either we find support month to month and move higher or we break below support and really have a big drop as far as the dollar is concerned and also if you take a look at the weekly let's take a look at the weekly for the dollar and we can see that short term there was a break here I can even actually extend that line so what this gives us is a good point of understanding what is going on a break of that high resistance of that high resistance of that high so that's a challenge on the weekly but on the daily a different view so I look at that dollar daily chart and what we see here is in my opinion the daily is not as bad as the weekly chart is showing you can see after moving above the 50-day moving average we've gone above it looks like we are coming back to find support potentially for a recovery to the upside another way of looking at that is to draw the support line based on this breakout here so that breakout brings it off the lows here and so we draw our uniformity support line and as long as this line holds then that suggests that the next dollar swing trade is to the upside take a look at the dollar from the hourly standpoint and we can see off the lows here that's a good entry on hindsight so we take that information draw our horizontal line and you can see while the dollar has been drifting lower here there seems to be support or in other words positive divergence so as long as that is holding and keep in mind this happens to be support at about 38.2 on the hourly 
that tells me that more than likely the dollar is due for a move higher which might explain why the hourly charts for the commodities are pointing down and so pretty much what i'm saying is more than likely commodities might drift lower with the dollar recovering that seems to be what the analysis is saying so now right now let's take a look at some ideas and we begin with breakout ideas chmi and i wanted to pack this video with ideas more than uh, analysis so here we can see that if this can break out above the recent monthly closing high this becomes a good candidate so set an alert if it can move above if and when it moves above 18.68 that's going to be an area of entry. So a breakout there would be good. RSI is good. RSI is above 69.1, which is what you want to see. We take a look at the MACDs. One of the MACDs is trading at three-year highs. So the RSI and the MACDs meet the minimum requirement. All is left is for the stock to break out above 18.63. The other one is AMRK and ARMK. Let's go to the monthly and here this one already broke out but is within five percent of the breakout so i would say still very timely the breakout level here was at 40.87 and it looks like a good candidate as long as it remains above 40.87 it's a good momentum instrument rsi is back above 69.1 and we can also see that the macd's are or one of the MACDs is breaking out the other MACD is close to breaking out so definitely meets the minimum requirement which is why it is on our stock to watch list in fact a breakout candidate that is already playing out so you can buy this since it is not more than five percent from the buy point of 80 40.87 and you, you need to insist that it stays above 40.87 in other words, it needs to continue confirming that it has strength and intent of higher prices by staying and holding above that price. The next idea is LN. Now we saw it break out this week, but is it it is right now failing to hold above the buy point. So do not buy this, do not buy this, do not buy this until it moves back above 18.45, which is this monthly closing high. RSI looks good. RSI is above 69.1. So wait for the breakout above 18.45. The MACDs are fine. A little bit coiling down. And that's why I say let's not let's not buy this until it breaks out. Do not buy this because the MACDs are kind of pointing down. You'd need a confirmation before you buy it. So it needs to break out above 18.45. I would set an alert for that. The next one is an EP and it is breaking out above the all-time monthly closing high so this one is very timely the level here is it now needs to stay above 42.94 which goes back to this break or that closing high RSI is at all-time highs which is exactly what you want to see and MACDs are also trading at three year highs if not all time high so if you are going to pick one if you are forcing me to pick one out of the lot this one is the best one because the rsi is trading at its all-time high strength so this one looks good and if you if you want to narrow all the, the ones that i'm putting here in terms of breakout candidates from the group of today's breakout ideas this one looks to be the one with the most momentum as long as it can hold above 42.94 the next one is NVTR and we can see that on the monthly it is just now above the prior all-time monthly closing high so it needs to stay above that if it is to continue doing well 13.28 was the monthly buy point it is still within that level or we're still within five percent of that breakout or thereabouts looks good RSI is close to 69.1 MACDs are breaking out so the RSI does need to show strength by moving above 69.1 but I think as long as it continues holding above the breakout level of 13.28 this is a good candidate for higher prices but clearly a movement 
above 69.1 on the RSI is what you'd like to see to confirm strength, but it still looks good. The other one is BOX or box. And the buy point is clearly this recent monthly closing high. It's a good candidate here. And the level to watch there is 19. 0.62 now that it is above 19.62 it needs to stay above that to continue confirming strength rsi is at all-time highs rsi is about to move above 61.8 for the first time ever which is one of our minimum requirements for momentum entry especially for ipos macd's are trading at all-time highs so this one looks good i would say this is number two in terms of quality from the list of stocks i am discussing here from a breakout perspective it does need to stay above 19.62. The other stock is VRS. Now, this one already broke out on the monthly, so we're going to have to, actually on the weekly, the monthly does not have a fully developed RSI, so we can't use the monthly. We have to take a look at the weekly. The weekly does have fully developed RSI, and we can see the RSI is at all-time highs. MACD, one of the MACDs is just about to break out to all-time highs. And we can see it, it cleared its recent weekly closing high, so it's already broke out. What we can do here is use the daily. And the daily has a recent close right there. And the level to watch there is to set an alert if it can clear this level. And the level there, it needs to be trading above. The next buy point is if it can clear 5.90 which incidentally is where it's trading. In other words, it needs to be above 5.90 if it is to see higher prices. You'd need to see a breakout again above 5.90 if the stock is to do well. Now let me share with you one that could also do well and it's pretty much for a swing trade. It is LNK and um, I, this was brought to my attention by one of you guys. So thank you for that. And we can see here, early it was trying to break out but failed. Early in the day it was breaking out but now has failed. So what I'm going to do is give you the most recent potential breakout. Do not buy this. Do not buy this. Not. Do not buy until you see it break out either above 11.87, which is this recent closing, daily closing high, or the next closing high the next a future buy point would be when it breaks out above 17.67 but let's not worry about this one it's ways off this is the one to watch do not buy this until you see it break out above 11.87 and the reason why it's a candidate is because we have a flat moving average the only way the flat moving average can start coiling higher the only way we can have a crossover between the moving averages the only way that can happen is by price first and foremost exploding and staying above 11.87 which is this closing high on a daily basis right there so you ne need to see a breakout above 11.87 first before we can see signs that the stock wants to move the moving averages and eventually potentially for a crossover so in other words to put it simple in simple terms you need to see a breakout above 11.87 before you can even consider this a buy. Now the next, I said I was going to discuss Bitcoin ideas. Let's begin with the ideas here. You can see BTC, B GBTC. Now the problem with this stock has always been that on the daily, the average daily volume is on the low side. And I don't talk about volume a lot, but here we can see a little bit of a low volume stocks so just be aware of that but the reason why i think it's a potential candidate is for a bounce is number one it seems to be holding around the 50-day moving average so you can buy this with a five percent stop now i did note that on the hourly for all of this the hourly is suspect there seems to be some resistance here but this can also be where it clears if it can clear that level of resistance on the hourly it might move higher. So that's why I say make sure you set a stop of 5%. Um, and one of the reasons why, let me take a look at the monthly here. I think if the monthly can coil back above 
that's going to be an indication of intent to move higher. So if the daily can continue holding, if the weekly can continue holding, you can see the weekly chart is pretty much, let me see whether I can show this. There's a breakout here and the weekly is doing its best to hold this line. So this could actually be similar to this entry here before this explosive run. If this can continue holding on the weekly, this is a candidate for potential breakout to the upside. So again, the daily is also showing RSI coming back to this, this line here. And most recently this found support. So this, if this can con continue holding, it's a good candidate to watch for a bounce. So again, the key is to buy it around current levels with a 5% to 8% stop loss. See whether we get a bounce. But if they can find continuation of this support and the RSI on the monthly moves above 69.1, these are candidates for potential recovery leg. The other one is BTSC. And the price here is pretty much a micro penny, if we can call it that. But the reason why we can watch this is it found support here. And this support is based on the fact that it moved above this previous breakout line of the lows here. And it's been bouncing pretty much around these levels. So here it found support. So I would add this as a, another Bitcoin idea. And the other one is BTFC. B-I-T. B-I-T-F-C. Maybe not. Excuse me. It is B-I-T-C-F. And we can see that it is. it did find support here recently and is recovering. For the day, it's up about 25%. And if we take a look at the weekly, you can see the weekly is finding uniform activity support at the RSI 50 level. So again, you can own some of these names. The, the, the ones that I mentioned here, GBTC, they are all in the same space. This one here, or the other one. But make sure you set stops, all right, in case they do recover. So those are the ideas on the bullish side. Let's take a look at some potential bearish ideas. Ameritrade is the first one, AMTD. And here I'm going to show you the monthly chart. The reason why I think it is a potential candidate for lower prices is this negative divergence on the monthly as it's been making an improvement here. I think this suggests to me that with this negative divergence on the monthly that the next trend here more than likely is for lower prices based on that resistance. And that's just keeping it simple. There's also line of resistance right there. And this gives us the break of that high resistance here of this high and now seems to be hitting resistance right there. We can take a look also at another idea KNX and here it is uh, pretty much resistance based on this recent break. Hope we can see that there and that break goes back to let me change something here goes back to this break here so as long as it is showing resistance on the line here, which is why it is down for the month, this remains a candidate for lower prices at current levels. And the other one is an, a biotech stock, H-A-L-O. And this one again, I was looking at this from this point of view of this break. We can actually look at a break, break line right there. It's one view or draw it this way. And what this line gives us is the break. Oh, let me hold on. The break here of that high in 2016. And then here coming back to back test it. So as long as it's down for the month, which is what it's doing right now, this one remains a candidate for lower prices in my estimation. The other one is WDC and WDC here is also you can see that it is coming back to test this break and has been on our sell list for a while since that resistance level there in the lower 90s. 
and I still maintain it that it is still a candidate for lower prices and also another reason why I was looking at that was the hourly as we've seen with other hourly charts in this video right there you can see that pretty much it is coming back to test the break right here so this one to me is timely all these are timely based on current prices and of course if they go against us you need to find a way of getting out of a bad trade by setting a stop at some level take a look at the next one which is mtdr and here we take a look at the monthly chart the monthly chart is showing that it is coming back oh, we can draw it the best way i can explain this let me go back about five years so bear with me here for a second all right so we have all data here it looks like there's a resistance band right there coming back from this break again uniformity resistance hope i don't forget to put that uniformity link Res did not get to that level but resistance here close enough to the highs there and now we're already coiling down so this remains a candidate in my opinion for lower prices now the next one is based on a break and it is hca and here we can see that it is a good candidate if and when if and when so do not short this because even right now we can see it is finding support but the level to watch here is the recent monthly closing high from late 2016 as your sell point so do not short this do not sell this until you see a break of 70.89 so it needs to break below that before it can see lower prices all right so set an alert do not short this until it is trading below 70.89 now i promise to take a, a minute or two to take a look at world markets and i'll do it very quickly because pretty much the conclusion here remains that we are in a strong market eem continues to explode and as long once it moved above 69.1 it completely changed the makeup there emerging markets continue to be strong as long as the monthly charts are above 69.1 Take a look at European markets, EFA is the ETF. And we can see here, as long as this is showing above 69.1, this is continuation of a bullish trend. Market should be strong. We can take a look at VGK, another European, a, a European ETF which is above 69.1 and we've been observing that as long as it is above 69.1 expect European markets to have a bullish stable tone to them and the other one is going to be the total world market index and as long as this index which is a total world market index is holding above 69.1 on its monthly expect world markets to be stable to bullish this is an inescapable fact because you can see here once we moved above 69.1 markets have started to pick up momentum we can expect momentum to continue as long as the rsi on the monthly is above 69.1 so i'm going to leave you with the current market snapshot we have about three hours to go let's take a look at the ideas posted in this video in case the market is pulling back you got ideas that can be used for downside action if the market continues to be stable to bullish, you got some long ideas. Wish you guys a great weekend. Eric Moad with Mother.com. As always, good luck, peace, and blessings. E-A-C-S.